Welcome back. Joining us in studio right now is Russell Peters, who is a comic. He just performed at uh, Just for Laughs here in Montreal. He's no stranger to Montreal, and we understand he also watches Soul Call. <laughs> hey, Russell, how are What's you? What's happening, Peter? Nice to see you in studio. Oh, uh, you know, it's good to be here. Now, well, uh, this show is a show that has a Caribbean background, and you don't have a Caribbean background, but you are very familiar with the Caribbean, both in growing up and in places you've worked, correct? I guess technically I do have a Caribbean background because of, you know, the way I, way I grew up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, not in my house, but uh, <laughs> anytime I left my house, I had a Caribbean background. You know what I mean? You grew up in Toronto. I grew up in Toronto. How long have you been doing comedy now? 14 years. Your, your comedy is very unique. You do a lot of comedy that deals with your racial background, which is East Indian. You mm -hmm. also do a lot of comedy that does touch on the, the, your background growing up in Toronto with, with the black community. <clears throat> yep. How do you find the audiences uh, take to your comedy both a generic, standard, middle-of-the-road white audience as opposed to when you perform for black or Indian audiences? Um, well, when I perform for a, a generic white audience, yes. I um, we don't like to... Mainstream. mainstream. The word is mainstream. Yeah, they're mainstream. And we're apparently upstream or yeah. something. So, <laughs> I, sorry, I haven't shaved. I just realized that I look really like Taliban. But um, <laughs> I should have shaved. I um, no, the uh, white audiences, I, I can't do a lot of this. I don't have a lot of the freedom I have with the black or Indian or other types of audiences. But um, it still works out fine, you know. You, you always have to be able to be able to change yourself to fit your market. Mm -hmm. when, when it comes to doing comedy that especially deals with your ethnic background and, and other ethnic backgrounds, uh, and you're doing it to a mainstream audience, do you find that it's a situation in some cases where they're almost afraid to laugh? Yes, all the time that happens. Um, <clears throat> it's funny because... They feel more uncomfortable with me talking about racial issues than the people who I'm talking about. Do you know what I mean? The mm -hmm. people I'm talking about love it because they're like, wow, that's real, that's true, he's not lying. Thank you for being our voice. <laughs> and the other, some, a lot of these uh, liberal white folks, you know, they get very uncomfortable like, ooh, I don't, I don't think he should be saying this type of stuff because this isn't helping. Did well, that surprise you when you first started? Or, or did it you... still happens. Yeah. It still happens. They get yeah, but I'm sure it doesn't surprise you anymore. It still surprises me. Really? Because I'm like, how are you misreading this? It's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that this is good or this is bad. I'm just saying this is the way it is. Do you know what I mean? I'm not telling you to make a judgment call, so don't make a judgment call. I'm not making a judgment. I'm saying this is the way it is, and that's the way it is, so laugh. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's nothing you can do to change it right now, so you might as well laugh at it. Where did you get your comedic voice from? Um... <clears throat> Um, I don't know. I think my dad gave it. My mom and dad gave it to me, honestly, because used to get picked on a lot in high school. And not, well, not so much in high school, but in grade school, growing up, my dad would give me, like a white kid would beat me up, and I'd go home. My dad would say, "What was the guy's name?" And I'd tell him the guy's name, and he'd give me the correct racial slur for that person. <laughs> <laughs> it would be like, you know, if there's like a Polish kid that beat me up, and go, "What's his name?" Jankowski. Well, you tell him that he's Polish, and blah 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 blah. <laughs> so I, that's how I actually learned how to read people's names. I didn't do so well with your director because uh, his name's retarded. I don't know what that is, <laughs> but <laughs> I um, uh, no, I you know, but generally my radar is pretty good. All right. You've played in the, in the Caribbean as well. I have. Now, how has it gone over uh, there in the Caribbean when you've performed? Uh, the Caribbean's awesome for me because they're not expecting... I think a lot of the times that they actually think I'm from there. Like when I go and perform in Trinidad, they really believe I'm from Trinidad. I'm like, I'm telling you I'm not from Trinidad. I have no ties to Trinidad. But they're like, no, they're no, but you must be from somewhere, yeah. <laughs> you must have some family in Sando or something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any family there. My family's in India and Canada, you know what I mean? But you blend in very well. Like you I said, you, you grew well. up with, in, in the neighborhood in, in Toronto. And, and there's no shortage of Indian people in the Caribbean. You know what I mean? Exactly. Well, there's no shortage, as you say in your routine, there's no shortage of Indian people anywhere. This is true. <laughs> if you have a country, we're probably there. And if we haven't opened up a restaurant already. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because you can tell by the size of the uh, city or the size of the Indian community um, how many Indians are in that city because uh, of what properties or businesses they own. The smaller the community, restaurants. <laughs> the bigger the community will branch out. Restaurants, gas stations. Even bigger, restaurants, gas stations, dollar stores, convenience stores, hotels. <laughs> and the bigger, bigger, you know, doctors, lawyers, accountants, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's how you can tell the size of the Indian community. 
Now, you've also been in, uh, performed in Montreal. I know uh, Karen Lewis has been on this program several times. And <coughs> Keith and Karen Productions, you have uh, done shows with them. And again, that show, those were shows that were primarily black. Uh, yep. the, the acts were primarily black. The audiences were primarily black. Yep. Uh, again, how did you end up on, on shows like that? Um, Keith and Karen actually have been really big supporters of me from day one. Well, not day one, because, but they bumped into me in 95. I'd already been doing it six years by then. But uh, we did their first show up here in 95, May of 95. I can remember it up north in the hood. I don't know if you were there or not. <laughs> no, I was not. But that was a really good show. And then they brought me back the next one and so on and so on. And I even hosted their male strip show. I remember they did that Big Black and Delicious. Big Black and Delicious, yes, yeah. So they had me hosting it. So I was small, brown, and tasty. But, um, <laughs> you know, what are you going to do? Now, you, you've also um, been in, in Europe, mm -hmm. UK. Yep. And you recently were in, in South Africa. Yep, doing shows. And again, you know, a lot of people don't think of comedy taking place in South Africa. Um, South is, Africa is that a big <coughs> comedy? Uh, it's a very new market. And uh, I get treated like royalty when I go out there. That's why I love going there, you know. I was just there um, for April and half of May. And uh, I had two billboards out there, mm -hmm. two massive billboards on the side of the highway. And when I was bored, I would just go and drive to the highway and sit there and look at my billboards. <laughs> now, is that, a, is, is that a, any kind of culture shock in doing, uh, because it's, it's an entirely different... Not, it's not as different as you think. Really? It's very much like Canada in the regard of there are so many different races there and so many different types of people that it's just like being in Canada. They just have a different accent, that's all. You know, there's blacks, whites, Indians, Orientals, um, Greeks, Italians, Portuguese, Spanish. They're all there. It's just like being in Canada. You know, it's like being in Toronto or Montreal. You've got everybody there. And it's not like they're deep-rooted. Uh, some of the white folks, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, and the black people generally are deep-rooted there. You know, <laughs> yeah. don't get any more deep-rooted than that. But, but uh, you know what I mean? It's like everything is there and every, it's just... It's a very alive, they're very alive cities in South Africa. Now, there are not a lot of Indian stand-up comics. No. Nope. Does the industry know what to do with you? They have no clue what to do with me. I'm the first guy, you know what I mean? And uh, because of the style of humor that I do, my humor is very in-your-face and, um, and real. And they're not looking for that, you know what I mean? They don't want somebody who actually has a voice and something to say. That, that can create a problem for them. Mm -hmm. So they would rather if I were to be more goofy or, you know, abstract. But that's not me. I, I gotta be real. I'm a real guy. And I wanna speak on behalf of real people, you know what I mean? But I wanna make it funny, and I make it funny. I try to make it, you know, so everybody can understand this is the reality, and this is funny about it. This is what's funny about reality. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. Um, I, it'll happen. It's just gonna take a bit, it's gonna take me a bit longer than a lot of other people. Again, as I said, you grew up in a primarily black neighborhood. What audience are you most comfortable in front of? Um, mainstream audience, Indian audience, black audience? Or does it make a difference? Um, it doesn't really make a difference, but then you have your preferences, you know what I mean? I know that in an Indian, in in an Indian audience, that's a really hard sentence to say, try it. In an Indian audience. See what I mean? In an Indian audience, I know that I can get away with a, a lot. I can get away with a lot, actually, because I'm their spokesperson almost, <laughs> you know what I mean? Thanks. Um, and black audiences, I feel very comfortable because it's like, I know that some of the people may not know me or know my where I'm coming from, and I know they may look at me like, you know, who does this guy think he is? And then when they hear me, they're like, sounds like he really knows what he's talking about. And I feel very comfortable there because that's who I feel most comfortable around are black people because that's who I grew up with. And I've actually even grew up around any Indian people, so mm. when I'm around black people, I actually feel more comfortable than I do when I'm with my own people. Well, it's great to have you here on Soul Call with us. Why, why are you cutting me off? Because of, of what I'm saying? No, no, we ran out of time. <laughs> but we'll have to, you have to have you back. Okay, definitely. Because I watch feeling? this, honestly, I do watch this show. When I'm in Montreal, he goes, hey, do you want to be on Soul Call? I'm like, is that the show with the graffiti writing? Yeah, I go, I watch it so every time I'm in Montreal. <laughs> well, we'll have you back. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Russell, for being here. Russell Peters, comic extraordinaire. More Soul Call coming your way right after this break.